G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here again for another VB.net, smashing them out, and this time we're going to be looking at binary serialization. Now I covered this briefly in my text-based game tutorial, so if you've seen that video, you're not going to see anything brand new. But what I've done is basically taken out the basics of binary serialization and jammed it in this video. The first question you might have is, what the hell is it? Binary serialization is a way of quickly saving data from classes and different data structures into a file. Okay, It's a really good way and a very quick way of saving custom data types such as one that I've set up right now in front of you and different things like that. For this example, I'm just going to use the, this class that I've created called Vector. Okay, I'm assuming that I've created a class for a 3D coordinate. So you can see I've got three members. I've got X, Y, and Z. Okay, and then I've got a constructor which just simply allows me to type in three numbers really, really quickly. All right, and I'll show you why I've done that as we continue on through the tutorial. Now, before we get into this, there's always a little bit of arguing about different developers if serialization is good or bad or things like that. Now, the goods for it are it's quick, it is a little bit cheap, I will say, but it gets the job done if you're just looking for something nice and easy. It is unfortunately very cheap in the sense that it just dumps all the data into a file. Okay, so it's a little bit slower than some other methods that you could probably use. And when you reload it, it has to reload the entire file. So again, pretty cheap and nasty. Other things that it does bad is that it exposes your data classes. So if you're really concerned about hacking or people, you know, using trainers to change up games and things like that, using binary serialization is not for you because it can easily be changed because, well, I'll show you what it looks like in a moment. Now, I've actually saved this project already, so I've already got a folder for it in, and I've already got the folder open, because I want to quickly go through this and show you as we go. If you want to pause the video and type this up right now, I want to get into it, and we're going to start by just creating a variable of a vector and putting some data in it. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down to main, I'm going to dim my vector, I'm just going to call it v1 as vector, as a new vector. In brackets, and this is why I did the constructor, this sub new, so I can specify three numbers straight away here on my declaration with one, two, and three. How easy is that? Okay, so what you would do for binary serialization is you have to create a file stream, you then have to create what's called a binary formatter and use the formatter to serialize my vector into my file stream and what that does is it feeds all the information down into the file and then we close the file and job done so what I'm going to do we have to do a couple of things first I like to import okay so I'm going to scroll up to the top here and just above module one I like to import two things the first one is system.io and the reason I import that one is because I use file stream and file a lot and this is where it comes from okay I'm then going to import, and this one's a fun one, system.runtime.serialization.formatters.binary. <laughs> All right, if you need time to pause and type that up, please do it now. If you don't know what imports are, imports are a way of shortening the way you type commands. Okay, so for example, if I took out system.io and I was to try and type in file stream, okay, let's go file stream, doesn't exist. But if I typed in io, dot file stream there it is so let's bring him back in import system.io now I can just type in file stream okay it's a way of cutting off that thing on the front really so to actually do serialization before we even start programming down here we need to do one thing to our class by default no classes are serializable in Visual Basic and that's a good thing it adds security and it adds a little bit of um, Mem or less memory usage in your application. If you want to be able to serialize your class above it, you need to open up a, with a, a bracket with a less than symbol. I generally call them diamonds because it's just easily identifiable. And you need to type in serializable. After that, some brackets and close the diamond. That tag there is going to tell Visual Basic, yes, I'm allowed to serialize this data type into a file. All right. Well, it doesn't even have to be a file. It can actually be across a network. It can also be into a lot of other things. But we're doing files today. Come down and let's start doing some programming. The first thing we're going to do is create our file stream. 
and that's pretty easy. You go dim stream as a file stream equals, and then you have to create a file. So let's go file.create and then give it a name. I'm going to be cheap and I'm going to go vectors.txt. The only reason I put txt on the end is so I can open it up in my text editor very quick. Once you've got your, this is going to create the file and it's going to have a file stream ready to feed data in. So let's create the binary formatter, which is going to take your class, your vector class, and the data from vector1 and feed it into my file stream. So we have to dim that one as well. Dim formatter as a new binary formatter. Okay, just like so. And now we're going to use the bad boys. Let's serialize it. Formatter dot serialize and then it wants two things it wants a stream and an object stream is stream object is v1 so this is where i'm serializing like the destination and then this is what i want to serialize so this is why you can actually do network communication as well your stream could actually be a network stream and i'm not going to get into that i might do it in a future video but not now to finish it off like any good book we need to close it off when you're done and your job should be done. Now, I haven't done any write lines or read lines, so nothing's going to appear on the screen, and the screen's going to disappear in us, but we'll press play. Hopefully it'll work. That indicates to me that it worked. And if I go to the folder, where my project, my debug folder, there's my vectors.txt. It's made the file. Inside of it looks a little bit ugly, but I guarantee you all the information for my vector has been saved inside of this file. And the reason I said before that if you don't want your game or file to be hackable, don't use this method. Because as you can see, it saves the project name, it saves the version, it saves the data type, where it's called, where it comes from, and the members as well. So you've really got to be careful when you're saving this kind of stuff because you don't, if you don't want it to be easily accessible or easily readable, easily readable, don't use serialization. Use some other kind of method. Maybe you should encrypt your files. Not going to talk about that today. So that's how you create the file and save your class to it. How would you load it back up? Okay, I'm going to do it in the same submain. I'm sorry, just to kind of try and keep it easy. So let's restore the class from a file, and it's pretty straightforward. First of all, we're going to set the stream to file dot open read. This time instead, same file name, so vectors.txt. Okay, and then what we're going to do is assign our good old vector v1, our formatter.deserializer. So what I mean is vector1 now equals formatter.deserialize, and it's asking for a stream, so you just put in stream. Okay, and then you close. Stream.close. Believe it or not, that's done. That's you opening the file getting the data out, closing off the file. Now, obviously, I didn't have to dim stream or formatter because I've dimmed them up here. If you were to put these two things, which you should, in different subs, you would have to dim stream and dim formatter again. Okay? But very, very similar to the way I've written it down here. So, as an example, I'm going to put a right line in so you can see it's coming back out of the file. Okay? In fact, I'm not going to put it back in V1. I'm going to put it in V2. Just like so, okay? So I'm not overriding the original data. So let's go right line v2.x. Now, let's quickly have a look. V, um, the dot x should be one. So press play, and there it is, one. If I do dot y, it should be, well, that's a t. It should be two, exactly. So that's me saving all the data in what, four lines of code? And then reading it in three. How easy is that? Now, let's do one last example before I finish up here. What if you wanted to save multiple vectors? Because it's not very common you're going to save just a single class to a file. Generally, you're going to save like a collection, or it's going to be an even bigger class which has multiple things inside of it. That's fine. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this dim for the moment, and I'm going to create a list of vectors. So just like we've done in previous videos, dim vectors as a new list of vectors vector. Let's add in a couple of vectors. Let's go vectors.add um, new vector. This is why I do constructors because you can do this stuff. And 111 can be my first one. My next one could be 123. 
My next one, one, three, five. Two, four, six, because why not? All right, so I've added in four vectors to my list of vectors. That means I have to change, because I got rid of V1, I have to change this to vectors. Poor fella. Okay, and that should hopefully save all my vectors to the file with no extra code. All right, but coming down a little bit, I'm obviously going to have to change this. Let's say vectors2 as list of vector. Okay, I have to make them the same, otherwise things aren't going to work. Now, I'm just going to literally print how many there are to the screen. So I'm adding four vectors, saving it to the file, reloading it, making sure that the stuff I save with and the stuff I'm loading with are the same data type, and then printing how many were loaded back to the screen. Hit play. It says there's four. One, two, three, four. It's perfectly fine. And in fact, the file looks almost exactly the same, but you can see now I've given away even more information that I'm using a list, that it's all full of vectors, and I'm still giving away the members and even the data in there. If somebody knew what they were doing, they could get in there and pull that file to pieces. All right. Anyway, that's not really a bad thing if you want to quickly save your file and load your file. And that's it. If you have any more questions or comments or suggestions, please comment down the bottom. I'm happy to hear them, but let's like, subscribe, and comment. That helps me out massively. And I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. See you then.